you admit then that it's okay to prohibit money because it money has no has no First Amendment protection. So it's okay if we start prohibiting money in politics. Um, it doesn't follow because uh, it turns out that speech is not the whole of the First Amendment. And when we talk about free speech in uh, in philosophy and in law, we're actually using a term of art. And it turns out that speech uh, is regularly a umbrella term for freedom of speech and freedom of press, which is also in the First Amendment. And the first and the freedom of the press has always been about money. So freedom of the press obviously requires a, a freedom of, of to spend your money on the press. And free speech is just the umbrella term for freedom of press and freedom of association also there to combine and actually uh, get this stuff done. So the whole argument that money is speech means that we can regulate you know, campaign finance uh, turns out to fail because it fails to understand really what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the full First Amendment, its full panoply, and free speech as a term of art that encompasses freedom of the press and freedom of association. We're talking about rich uh, business and political interests who can drown out the voices of uh, normal citizens. They say that, but you have to wonder, is it true? Um, I uh, take a case of where you're not dealing with campaign uh campaigns for office, but for campaigns for issues in states that have initiative and referendum. There are many, many examples where businesses and government and, and unions all together spend millions of dollars in campaigns and a few individuals make the case for, let's say, tax limits, and the people have sided against all the money. They're just gobs of these cases. Uh, Jeb Bush pushed millions through the through the electoral system and got nowhere because the people didn't he didn't crowd out any voices. Uh, he lost because the people didn't like him, and he was not right for the election. He was just, he was just a bad candidate. And uh, it turns out progressives are on the side of the big money interests in many of these initiatives, and Something they see you... themselves losing. They see themselves losing over and over again to normal people, to the, the man on the street, and they, but they witlessly say it's big money that's buying them. The progressives in almost all these cases are the ones that have the big money on their side with government employee unions, other unions, and uh, almost almost all the lobbyists. Term limits is a great example. And uh, and I think that the show doesn't buy votes. People actually have some free will and they have their own ideas and you can't buy them against that. You can only move people on the margins. So it works on, like I say, on close races and things like that. And then money does make a huge difference. Uh, when, when there's not much difference between the Republican and the Democrat, you know, the moneyed one is probably going to make it. But that has nothing to do with real arguments. And I think that they are evading the truth. People in power like campaign finance reform because oh, yeah. it, it defangs their, their challengers. Of course. A campaign finance reform is, is basically, as uh, Paul Jacob puts it, is uh, incumbents regulating their, uh, their upstarts, their competition. Of course you want to regulate out the competition. And in fact, it's been shown that since uh, campaign finance reform became a big deal in America since the 70s, uh, rates of retention of represent representation have gone up. That is, there is less turnover in Congress since all this campaign finance stuff. Why? I don't think it's hard to find out and hard to see. And it turns out that money isn't speech, of course, but free speech, which means not just a subset of speech, but also freedom of the press and freedom of association, does require money and the use of capital and wealth to put out messages and if you believe in freedom, you have to be against campaign finance reform. Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump belie all this. Neither of them are dependent on PAC money. 
or not much. I mean, Bernie does get some PAC money. I mean, you know, he loves unions, uh, but they just consider that's just not that's not bad because they're unions. I mean, it's one of those great things about the progressives that there there is no double standard they won't swallow at some point. Well, I think um, I but, think uh, the argument the argument I've seen Robert Reich make is that unions represent many voices, but Coke money represents only the voices of the Cokes. Well, that's literally not true because almost everything the Cokes are for, I'm for. I get no money from the Cokes. Never have, never will, probably. And uh, and yet they, they're, they're funding things that I like. Whereas unions, we know good and well because of the uh, recent lawsuits that have happened in California and elsewhere, that membership hates the fact that money has been taken from them and then spent on Democrats when they themselves are Republicans or not not our independents, but many union members around the United States deeply resent how their unions spend money in politics. And for you, Robert Reich to defend unions on that ground is to just show that he really doesn't care about minority opinion. He doesn't. You know, to me, that one thing you should always look at is what are you doing when you uh, live according to the rules you're setting up? What is it the government is doing when you set up campaign or finance reform? Um, don't pretend that when you call it campaign finance reform and getting money out of, po of politics, that's actually what you're accomplishing. What is it that you actually do? And in the case of campaign finance reform, uh, the most important things that government does is suppress speech and the press. Press that is not guaranteed a loophole through the freedom of the press, you know, the narrow interpretation of the freedom of the press uh, in the Constitution. And just look at what you're doing, folks. You're suppressing speech. And you think that that's good somehow? That's not democratic on the face of it. And you're pretending that you're defending democracy. You know, it's like the, it's like the case of, um, of uh, eugenics. If your program for improving the racial stock of the country means that you're uh, killing millions of people, maybe you're doing something wrong. Similarly, in campaign finance reform, if your way of getting money out of politics is suppressing the actual speech of actual individuals, you're doing something wrong. And Citizens United was simply a bunch of people getting together, made an organization and made a movie that, that, that tell how much they hated Hillary Clinton. So basically, they had the government suppress a movie for their star. It's, a, it's embarrassing. It, it's just so embarrassing. And I don't see how, once you know the facts of campaign finance and the Citizens United case, I don't see how you can be for campaign finance reform or against Citizens United.